the code will also be present at 10 uh, before we leave. So don't feel bad if you didn't get the code. It's lots of fun playing with, I can assure you. Thank you so much, Dita. Uh, super exciting uh, to hear about your work. Um, our third speaker is Christopher Gansing. He is a professor of artistic research and the director of the International Center for Knowledge in the Arts. Uh, he works out of the Royal Danish Academy of Fine Arts, uh, but the center he heads is a joint venture between the different Danish art schools, which I think is a super clever setup that we really want to keep an eye out for. Uh, previously, uh, Christopher was uh, the artistic director of uh, uh, the transdisciplinary and world-renowned art and culture festival, uh, Trans. Mediala in Berlin. And Christoph is also an alumni of Malmö University. Uh, and I know that, that, that it says in your bio that, that, you, that you were at K3. So rest in peace, K3. We all miss K3, especially here when we can see uh, a new building instead of the old beautiful uh, K3 building that was uh, over there. It was a huge part of uh, making Malmö University come alive in the end of the 90s. Uh, but without further ado, Christopher Gansing. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, when I look out the window and when I walked here from the hotel, I was both a bit nostalgic and horrified at the same time. Uh, but uh, I think that is fitting for the talk that I will uh, give now where I will um, actually revisit also some of the projects that some of them originated also here during my years at uh, MAM University and K3. And it will be a, a, a sort of time traveling between the past, present and the future of creative mediums for, uh, or mediums for uh, future creative expression. And um, um, this um, requires us to also um, as I gave the title for today talks, learn to think uh, and perhaps also work uh, transversely. Uh, so that's what I will be exploring through some examples from my uh, research and curatorial work over the years. And uh, I will actually begin with a quote. You mentioned the Transmediale Festival. So uh, from in the 2020 edition, the final edition that I uh, directed, uh, right before the pandemic, miraculously, we were able to pull that festival off uh, in Berlin. Uh, we had a festival called End to End, and we had uh, a quote from the uh, dear um, French psychoanalyst and philosopher Félix Gattari on this uh, topic of uh, learning to think transversa transversally. And I actually have this quote printed on the T-shirt that I'm wearing. So now I'm going to do something that technicians hate, and also just to get a little bit like less nervous and in the mood. Um, take off the jacket. So, and then I will, you can see the quote here on the back of my t-shirt. You probably can't read it, so I will read it for you. Uh, now more than ever, nature cannot be separated from culture. In order to comprehend the interactions between ecosystems, the mechanosphere, and the social and individual universes of reference, we must learn to think transversely. So this is from 1989 and the essay, The Three Ecologies, in which Gattari made this kind of call to uh, think together these, the, these spheres that he was talking about, which are the, uh, uh, the environmental, the mental, and the social. And he made this in the context of what he saw already then as a global uh, ecological crisis. So uh, what could this mean for our discussion here today, uh, specifically in relation also to, to, to perhaps art and uh, creative media? Uh, I have a few examples of that and perhaps we can revisit uh, uh, the, the overall kind of uh, vision <laughs> of this quote later on. So uh, first, I'd just like to give a little bit um, of um, a... Um, of a um, uh, definition of uh, the transversal as such. So this is a simple geometrical form where you see two parallel lines crossed by one diagonal line. The diagonal line would be the transversal in this case. And um, I'm interested in like how we can use uh, this figure of, of uh, 
now we see it here from kind of mathematical point of view, but how can we use that in cultural production? And I'm interested in these kind of meeting points, uh, these areas of combinatorial uh, kind of logic, uh, which where the lines cross each other. And so for me, transversality is a, a methodology of working across different contexts, for example, taking a medium, uh, an artifact, and then see how that kind of branches out uh, into institutional, subjective, technological, and social cultural uh, fields. And um, in order to maybe do this a bit more concrete, uh, I will draw on a work that I explored already in my PhD dissertation here at uh, Mama University called Transversal Media Practices, uh, where I used this figure of transversality as a methodology for media archaeology, which I think is quite relevant for the discussion here today, because that is specifically a field where you work with this kind of nonlinear approach to uh, how technologies develop over time. So really mixing up this past, present, future matrix. Um, and in that, um, it's also perhaps a, a critique of um, the idea of actually media evolution, if we take the term that uh, gives the space its title, because it's also, I think, a transversal approach suggests there is nothing natural to the progression of media. Uh, there is nothing inherently uh, developmental uh, about them in a linear way, but the way that the practices uh, uh, that we enact through media shape also how they develop. Uh, and those can be uh, retrieving things from the past that we uh, thought were obsolete. Uh, uh, and also they can, of course, extend into the speculative futures as Niklas uh, was uh, exploring. So uh, one case study in this dissertation was the Art of the Overhead, which was a festival uh, first take, took place in 2005 in Copenhagen and then also here in West Harbor in 2009, uh, where uh, the artist and researcher Linda Hilfling Ritterstedter and myself proposed the uh, antiquated medium of the overhead projector as a, actually a medium, uh, a future medium for creative expression. At a time when we perceived back then <laughs> uh, the digital and especially the new media being at its kind of hype height, <laughs> uh, at least we thought so. Um, and um, so that festival was not about overhead projectors really, but it took this um, uh, kind of disregarded non-medium almost, a residual medium, I like to think about it, as something that was always sitting, at least when I grew up, still in the back of the classroom, sometimes brought out, but was not like thought about as a medium for actually a, a, crea a creative expression. But the overhead has this interesting history that it embodies actually the transition between the analog and the digital because the first versions of the PowerPoint software were, was in 1980s was actually used uh, de designed to uh, neatly format overhead slides so you would print on transparencies from the PowerPoint software because video beamers back then were not common in, in rooms uh, like this. Um, and so um, the overhead branches out into this analog digital transitions but also a lot of other histories, the whole uh, history of like presentations, uh, uh, business rooms, educational classrooms of course but also the 1960s light shows, the psychedelic light shows. So it had this, all of this kind of, we made this kind of cut through these histories and proposed to artists that they could respond to that um, and think about the overhead as a medium which had all these kind of features that were uh, then highly sought for in digital media like interactivity, tactility, liveness, high resolutions and so forth. So it was kind of a transversal thing out from this one medium into that whole discussion about um, the, the development and the supposed linearity of that technological development. Um, skip to um, Transmediale uh, in 2013, uh, did a festival that um, sort of continued this media archaeological approach uh, and it was called uh, mysteriously BWPWAP, which is acronym for back when Pluto was a planet. And, and here, kind of similarly, as with the overhead projector, it was not really about Pluto, but the infamous kind of demotion by the International Astronomical Union in 2006 of Pluto from planetary to dwarf planet status was taken here as a kind of a parable for how quickly technologies can change and also our whole knowledge system due to a change in classification uh, and, and also in turn relating to um, new ways of scientific and technological observation. 
Um, and um, I, I did find examples of that being used kind of in a meme-like way online, although I won't claim that it's like a very common uh, net piece of net jargon. But this, this text here perhaps uh, illustrates the approach. Back when mobile phones were dumb, letters traveled by pneumatic air, tweeting wars for birds, users were chatting on the Minitel, ICQ beat IRC, Xerox challenged the Thermofax, YouTube was just another Web2 startup, Fax was the new Telex, you were calling up bulletin board systems, only university students were using Facebook books, history had ended, we had nine planets, Pluto was a planet. I'll skip this part, but we did restage the vote on Pluto. It was uh, unfortunately voted out again. Uh, but one installation in this, uh, in this, in this festival uh, that I want to focus on was uh, this Octo PC7C1 uh, miscommunication platform, which brought back a lost technology in Berlin uh, into the present, which was the huge underground network of uh, pneumatic uh, mail, <laughs> Rohrpost in, in German, Röhrpost, I think it's called in Swedish. Uh, so in these tubes that uh, you would normally find on construction sites covering up cables, or uh, uh, there is actually pressured air traveling powered by powerful <laughs> vacuum cleaners, and there is some uh, uh, canisters containing messages. So it was an idea to make the, let's say, in often invisible network communication uh, technologies uh, tangible physically, and that the routing process could be uh, also uh, take, yeah, could take place through the interaction of the visitors of the festival. Um, and this was, uh, I should say, in the context of also the kind of the post Snowden NSA uh, scandal uh, um, and the kind of increasing paranoia about being mediated by these big uh, corporate platforms in network communications uh, that this installation was made. And it was actually taken up by the CCC, the Chaos Communication Club, which is like Germany's biggest uh, and quite famous hacker association for their big congress where they open sourced this technology and still use it today. Uh, and that was specifically then also mentioned as a way to disintermediate yourself from the platform uh, economy. Yeah. And that brings us right to the last example that I would like to talk a little bit about, which is uh, the final edition that this quote was from, also of the Transmediale that I directed, uh, in which I also curated an exhibition called The Eternal Network. So here, the network itself became kind of uh, um, object of a transversal analysis, asking uh, if we have reached maybe the limits of the network imaginary, both as a cultural and technological form, and speculating on what could come after uh, networks. And networks here, mostly, of course, relating in a way to, to net cultures and to the decentralization and disintermediation models that uh, uh, come with that, and especially referencing the 1990s um, in the exhibition, the 1990s uh, so-called critical net cultures that arose in Europe as an alternative to the wired kind of Californian ideology model of, of the internet and its lineage also to the Silicon Valley. Um, and uh, here we kind of a little bit perhaps naively try to then think about uh, what could be recuperated from those very much copyleft, um, DIY, homegrown, community-centered uh, network cultures of the 90s uh, today. And the result was uh, an exhibition and conference, uh, performances and so on that explored uh, a querying of networks, decolonizing networks, a lot of projects focus even on like offline uh, uh, networks that perhaps were in, in, in the fashion of like being safe spaces for specific groups um, rather than this kind of idea of a global totalizing uh, network. Um, but we did fail actually quite completely, not completely, but almost to address the emerging paradigm of Web3 and, and crypto. Uh, and in hindsight, that was maybe a little bit what was naive about it, because I think that today uh, that kind of idea of decentralization has perhaps almost completely been taken over by that paradigm, uh, which I feel is a little bit, for me, uh, coming out of this 90s culture, a little bit like the dark sides of of uh, decentralization in the sense that, and this has nothing to do with the amazing work that you have done, Dieter, but, uh, as art, uh, but um, I feel that that infrastructure uh, of the Web3 
uh, and the blockchain protocol comes with such a uh, completely financialized and value chain uh, based uh, paradigm that it kind of encapsulates the future medium <laughs> for expression in a way that uh, is a bit unfortunate and that's something that I'd love to discuss further of course um, and I would say that um, in relation to that, that when we think about this question, coming back to the Gattari uh, quote about learning to think transversely, it's important that we take this actually seriously about the ecological, the mental and the social and think that uh, together and not as separate spheres and let the, those, that thinking and the visions for the, organizing those fields shape uh, these future mediums rather than the mediums and their infrastructure shaping uh, us uh, in a way. Um, and uh, well, I would just end with a kind of a plugging uh, for a future <laughs> uh, a conference that I'm doing in Copenhagen at the end of October at the International Center for Knowledge and the Arts uh, called Transformative Futures, where we will be exploring uh, how artists, in, in, very much in the way as the previous speakers actually have already uh, beautifully illustrated, kind of rethink material, temporal and um, uh, spatial, uh, actually, uh, parameters of, of the future. So, with that, thank you. <laughs>